have to say that these bud baby budgies are the cutest. So that is baby budgie number one on the left and number two on the right. And in fact, number one has actually been feeding uh, budgie number two as well. Um, it can feed itself quite happily now, can the eldest. And it has been feeding both of its siblings. So it's been feeding this this little one and grooming it a lot. And then the third one is down here. Just resting. I'm about to put out the light for bedtime, but they were so cute preening each other. I thought I would just show you guys because it's very cute. I just thought I would share some of my little succulent babies. Um, so I start them off uh, out in the porch in a tray that's just gravel um, because what you would happen, I actually took these two the other day, what happens if if you take it off and you shove it straight into the earth uh, the wound where you took it off doesn't have time to heal it actually may, needs to heal and make a scab on it if it doesn't, rot sets in and your plants rot so normally, I just pop these here because they're around but normally what you would do is snap a leaf off and I lie it on uh, gravel until it's got a scab and then I mist it occasionally the whole lot and let them set roots and as you can see they set roots really really quickly so this one has got tons of roots this has got tons of roots and so now I've just moved them into this is just a, um, a seed compost so it's very low in fertility and I start them off in here and then once they're properly rooted and once you can see this is starting to form leaves once it's got some proper those roots have gone properly in and it's got some proper leaves I'll then dig it up as a little plant and pot it on um, I'm not sure whether these aloes are going to survive uh, they've gone a bit black they have got some root. Uh, why? Where's the one with the root? This one has got some good root on it, so I'm hoping that I can get them to uh, come back into life and green up. So that is a little view of one of my little succulent baby trays. Well, spring is most certainly in the air, and I'm very excited by a discovery I've just found. I have shoots coming off, or germination rather, of the sweet chestnuts. So I collected these sweet chestnuts earlier um, in 2017 uh, when they fell in a forest um, and I planted them up and you can see that they obviously have decided it's spring enough to start growing. So all four of these seeds are starting to grow and turn into little trees. Um, so this is gonna be really, really great. These are gonna be planted in the nuttery at the farm. Obviously, this is, they are tiny, tiny babies, so it's going to take them a while to mature, but I'm just really, really excited about more trees uh, from growing at home. So we're doing the Brimwood Farm woodland, of course, which is going to be full of native trees. But as I say, these are going to be used in the nuttery, and I'm going to be a mad tree parent this year, because with my little saplings from last year, the trees that I was sent earlier this week uh, through the post by a, a lovely supporter of the farm and with these as well it's going to be all about trees this year. Okay guys this has been a really exciting week for plants because not only did I get those trees but Chris over in Ireland has sent me uh, some carnivorous plants from cuttings he's taken so there should be a Venus flytrap in here and then two Nepenthes which I'm going to keep in the bathroom. Um, there seems to be more than three. So I thought we'd just do another unboxing, which is kind of exciting, because as I said before, I do love a, getting a plant in the post. And we'll see what is in here. They came by airmail, so they came incredibly quickly. And they're very well packed. Where is it hiding? Here it is. Here is the first. Oh, it looks amazing. It already looks...
looks amazing. Wow. So these are those pitcher plants that, you know, they hang. And then the pictures are big and the fluted and they hang down. So there's some cuttings of those. I'm going to root them into sphagnum moss, hopefully. I'm going to keep them wrapped up for now because I don't want moisture escaping. Lovely little Venus flytrap. Beautiful. I'm running out of space. Let's put that over here. So this is, a, I think this is one of the Nepenth, Nepenthes that he, that Chris rooted, which is pretty amazing in itself that he's managed to do this. Yeah, here we go. Beautiful. Oh, and so here you can see what I meant about these hanging flutes. So these are the ones that actually catch the flies. Look at that. Isn't that amazing? And so they're in a peat mix at the moment, I think, peat and perlite. Um, I'm going to try and pop them up on in the future in sphagnum moss um, because that's a, more of a sustainable resource. But that's incredible. And then the final one. Yes, yeah, so there are four. So we've got a Venus flytrap, two rooted Nepenthes, and then I remember now Chris said he was going to send me those cuttings and just see if I could get them to root. And then this beauty. So again, we've got more. So you can see, that I can't remember the varieties. I'll put them on the screen. So there's a red one and a green one. How exciting! Well, if you watched last week's video, uh, you'll know I put in some seeds the first of the year into this heater propagator, mostly herbs, but a couple of uh, aubergines and some um, peppers. And look, babies. So these are the dill. And then we also have a few corianders coming up. So funnily enough, these are actually the brand new packets. So the basil and the flat parsley um, and the, the, yeah, the other parsley in here, the curly parsley, they're not old packets, only a year old. Um, so it might be a complete coincidence, but the brand new fresh packets have really germinated fast. So we've got quite a lot of lovely little dill plants here some coriander there's quite a lot of coming up there you can see in the middle and um, we're just keeping an eye out now on the basil the two basil varieties the two flat leaf parsley varieties uh the peppers and aubergines and then also obviously you know i also couldn't help myself so there's no signs yet of the sweet peas or the really old spring onions and cucumbers but we may not get anything in here at all but it's just nice to have some little baby plants Hi guys, I've just gone shopping and look what I've found. So I have found loads of clearance. Now, you know that I'm not a fan of yellow daffs, but look, 50p for these. Aren't they nice? So I'm gonna get a load of white daffs and some more here. And they've also got some um, uh, iris reticulata. So I'm gonna get those again, 50p. So it's rather good. Now, obviously, it's kind of the wrong time of year to put bulbs in now. So these may only have leaves this year. They might not actually have flowers. But when they're only 50p, you can't really say no, can you? So that's my, uh, my nice little bargain find of the day. So today, I'm all those bulbs I bought yesterday, I'm getting in. Uh, and the first one's going in at these Iris Reticulata Harmony. We've already got Catherine Hodgkin. Uh, flowering up here um, and I'm going to put the iris reticulata harmony into this trough now when they when you buy them and they've already started sprouting it's really important to get them in the ground quick because they're using all the bulbs energy to produce this shoot but they haven't got any roots yet so they've got no way to feed themselves so you although they're a bargain these were 50p a bag because they were massively reduced to make them make sure they last you need to get them into the soil and encourage that growth now these iris reticulata may flower uh, and they may just 
put leaves up because obviously as I say there's no roots. I'm going to put all bulbs, all the iris reticulata into here. So I've got 30 bulbs so uh, ideally I'd like to have a nice round pot to put them in but just to get them into the ground I'm going to put them all in here this year and then I'll probably dig them up uh, once they're finished and I'll put them into rounded pots. And then the um, daffodils I'm also going to pop into pots and I think I'm going to make one mass display of them in this large clay pot I've got. Um, some of them have started to shoot as you can see uh, and then others like this pheasant eye, this, this lovely pheasant's eye one, um, there's no signs of anything yet so I think I'm going to en masse plant them in this pot, see how they do and then uh, again after they've finished flowering and the, and the leaves have all died down then I will think about putting them into the garden.